two can only be zero. Well, do you wanna see a physics? Shut up! <laughs> Come to everyday physics conversation with two students, one from Ivy League Brown, another from New York University. Total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is something when water state behave like glass. Okay, when water state behave like glass, then we call total internal reflection. So I'm gonna give you the formula, and then we'll, let's see whether you can. Oh, can, put, I, can I see yeah, sure. The only reason glass usually acts like that for all angles because of its higher index of refraction. Not water, for all angles. Greater not than for the critical all, angle. Yeah, of course. But that's the reason why glass usually act like that for most angles. Most. So we basically say that it's fully uh, fully reflective for all angles, even though sometimes it partially refracts. Well, the glass the glass reflects only 90% of the time, and 10% we lost. We don't talk about it. We said glass is 100% reflect. Uh, glass gives you theta initially equal to theta final, but that's not the case, right? Uh, that's not the case, right? Yeah. Theta it initial. Uh, it transmits 96%. 96%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, so the uh, the last time I told you when um, small n goes to big n, right? Then theta incident is greater than theta. Final. Not final. Refracted. refracted. Okay. Today I'm going to tell you the another one when um, Isaac take a look uh, when it's uh, when the light goes from the big n to small n, right? Mm -hmm. Then what happened? The incident angle, right? If the incident angle go bigger and bigger, right, then incident angle F, uh, for in incident angle is equal to what we call critical angle, right? Uh, if and only if, uh, if uh, just that, uh, the reflected angle uh, become uh, 90 degree, right? Of this? That's the boundary yeah. between a uh, small n and big n. So this is a small n. Can you give me an example of a small n? Yeah. Air. And can you give me an example of big n? Uh, one. Okay. What is the name of this one? Normal. Normal. All right. Let's say let's consider three. Three ray of light. Ray of light number one. So this is closer to the normal. So this is much away from the normal. Yeah. So it refracts like normal. Uh, so what is happening? Incident ray. Is gonna get bigger. Mm -hmm. This incident ray is much bigger than incident angle. Incident, uh, incident angle is much bigger than this incident angle, right? Mm -hmm. So this incident angle is much bigger. So this is approaching to where? A little bit closer to the boundary. Li away, away from the normal, and getting closer to. Yeah. Okay, so the last one maybe. Uh, that one looks... Oh, I don't... I cannot... I cannot... You have to use the purple one. So, as the incident angle gets bigger and bigger, as the incident angle gets bigger and bigger, what happened? The incident angle become... Uh, critical angle. Yeah. Critical angle. Just that. The angle of reflection in 90 degrees. Refraction. Refraction, sorry. Just that angle of refraction. Is refraction is 90. ninety degree. Okay, good ninety degree. And if you if you increase a little bit more, one uh, 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 a, a, a tiny a tiny here more, what happened? Then total, it reflects. Total total, total internal reflection will happen. Can right? we show this using math? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So. The equations that we're going to do is uh, Snell's law, right? Mm -hmm. So what Snell's law tells us, n1, n1 sine theta, theta 1 is equal to n2, n2 sine theta 2. Okay, so let's see, is this big N? Yes. Yeah. Sine theta, what do you call this one? Is equal to, is this a small n? Yeah. yeah. What do you call this one? But this doesn't matter because that's uh, okay. Okay, so n sine is equal to n is small n right yeah so theta c is equal to sine small n over big n okay so this is the formula so isaac you're going to solve one problem and Raf, you're going to solve one problem so isaac going to solve when it is from big n to 
is small and and big and is water and is small in the air and ref this is 1.33 and this is one and ref you're going to solve this one big and to small n this is from diamond diamond to glass wait that I have from glass diamond is 2.42 and glass is uh 1.42 i believe Five. yes 1.5 yeah 52 i have a question yes uh so does that mean snell's law is no longer true if you go past the critical angle if you pass the critical angle uh meaning the right here oh, wow. yeah greater because i'm pretty sure if we go past the critical yeah. angle so that theta r is equal to yeah, theta yeah. i then we get n1 is equal to n2 which is obviously false so that's right that means the, snell's law becomes false right? the, the calculator is going to give you what invalid invalid undefined result yeah yeah because our yeah. sign doesn't have that big of the that's way. that's true that's true mm -hmm. that's that's good observation um, but one thing we know that uh let's find the uh, okay first isaac find what is the critical angle when um the light moves from water to air come use this formula when water is moving from light to air so that's just going to be 1 over 1.33, which is, uh, you know, the index of refraction of water. While he's calculating, I'm going to explain why this is only true if you go from a smaller, um, larger medium to a smaller medium in terms of optical density. Well, that's only true because... 48.75. Yeah, he's right. About 49 degrees. Okay. No, no, no. Right 48.75. Okay. Not, not 48.74. Four uh seventy five. What if forty eight point seventy five uh six? Hmm? What if the angle is forty eight point seventy six? Oh. Well the question I'm raising right now. If we just do a little bit, then it will internally reflect just hundred like percent, right? Yep. Okay. Good. Uh what if fifty degree? What if it's fifty degrees? Then it'll also internally reflect. Yep. So there will be no refraction, hundred percent? Mm-hmm. A hundred percent reflection. So, so it's not as extreme as this, actually. It might look. Can you show me fifty degrees? Right, water, and again. Yeah. Right. So fifty degrees. This is water, and this is air. So fifty degrees. Normal. Here is our normal. Then, here is say thirty degrees. So this is thirty, mm -hmm. and then I. Thirty degree we already know is refractive, so don't don't show thirty degrees. Fine. Just show fifty degrees. 50 degrees is only something like this, then okay. it's totally internally reflective. Okay, this is just good. like right a mirror. Alright, now show for 48.75. 48.75 is. No, no, go do another one. Okay, so 48.75 won't really be a noticeable change from 50. But 48.75, there will be no. Uh, total internal reflection, right? Forty-eight point seventy-four. Seventy-four. It's just ninety degree. Right. So it would look something like this, or since it's not exact, maybe it would go up a little bit. A little but bit. okay, but we are exaggerating. Okay. All right. Uh, forty-eight point seventy-five. Forty-eight point seventy-five. Immediately, we've gone past that value, and now it bounces. And there's not even any visual difference between point seven four and point seven five. I can express on this whiteboard. So, you know. Hi, can I ask him a question? Very yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just say. Okay, let's see if you can do this. Which one will have a bigger critical angle without doing any math? Can you explain your physical reason? Okay. Your physical reason? Listen, now he's asking me this exercise while I'm a math major and asking me to do no math. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's going from bigger to smaller than. Okay, let me think about the trajectory of uh, sine minus. Ooh. You want to hit? No, no, I don't. Okay. Just let me think, okay? Okay. So 1 over 1.1 is obviously bigger. So is sine minus 1 uh, a bigger or uh, increasing or decreasing? Well, let's think about it. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, well... Oh yeah, it's increasing. I know that. So it should be this one. That one has a bigger critical angle. Yeah. Good. Yeah, but can you explain physically why? Oh, how? 
set up with physically. Mathematically, I know that since the sine function looks like this, then the sine inverse function is going to be that, but we flip it over the x, y axes, so it's going to look something like this, i.e. it's increasing over time. Yeah. And we know that this ratio, 1 over 1.1, 1 .1, is obviously bigger than 1 over 3, so since it's an increase, then that means there must be an increase in the y value okay, too, okay. so it works. Okay, now I have an exit for you. Okay, Isaac also drew a boundary. No, 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 just separate. I thought this we were sharing. No, no, sharing is... Uh, is sharing! Okay, draw, draw a normal. <laughs> Normally, the line below x-axis. Okay. Yeah, that's the incident. Like that? Yeah, that's, that's it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, draw. Okay, so one is here and one is here. Here, here. Yeah. So it's then, literally the same thing, just change of reference. What is the answer? Is it? Oh, it's just going Yeah, it does. But so, you just copied me. Hey, you listen. It's, <laughs> it's, I don't know, explain it's, why. It's, it's common sense. No, 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 no. There's no such thing as common sense. Okay, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. No, Should be obvious to the... You have to say physically one. Shut no, up! Math, math is good. Math Should is be good. obvious that theta 1 equals 0. So that means this whole side goes to 0. So this side has to go to 0 as well, meaning theta 2 can only be 0. Okay, do you want to see a... Physical... Shut up! <laughs>